We so appreciate everything that the LAYC does for young people all across the District of Columbia and indeed all across the region. And uh, no better place to talk about initiatives that can improve the lives of our young people. Um, let me uh, ask uh, three folks to join me at the podium uh, as I make three important announcements. Uh, first, the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services, Brenda Donald. Dr. Barbara Brazron, Interim Director for DBH, and Lori Kaplan, the CEO of the LAYC. And I know it's really warm, so I'm going to hit hit the, the facts. Uh, first, uh, my administration is launching a campaign to address underage drinking in the district. According to Youth Risk Behavior Survey recently completed, nearly 22% of D.C. youth have used alcohol by the age of 13. This is an unacceptable number. We all know that drinking at a young age can have tragic consequences for young people, for their education, for their health, and for their ability to find uh, their pathway to the middle class. In fact, youth who drink before the age of 15 are five times more likely to develop alcohol dependence and abuse alcohol by the time they turn 21. So today we're launching a major effort called There's a Reason. There's a reason kids shouldn't drink at a young age. There's a reason why alcohol isn't allowed in our school. And there's a very good reason for our community to take action. This campaign aims to raise parents' awareness about the prevalence of underage drinking and the risk associated with it. Through this initiative, we will empower parents to uh, inform their kids and provide them with good tools so that they can help their kids make good choices. And our entire community will be stronger for it. Now, that's good news, isn't it? Second, I'm excited to share that the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration uh, was awarded a three-year, $9 million grant to the district to help. This grant will provide non-Medicaid reimbursable services to chronically homeless individuals with mental health or substance abuse disorders. This means that our community partners can do even more to support people with mental health and substance abuse challenges so that more of our homeless men, women, and families can get into housing and stay in housing. And these funds will bring us one step closer to achieving our mission to make homelessness in the district rare, brief, and non-recurring. And last, but certainly not least, uh, I'm very pleased to announce a new leader to oversee the Department of Behavioral Health. This department supports the prevention, treatment, resiliency, and recovery for district residents with mental health and substance abuse disorders. DBH serves more than 28,000 people every year, including adults, children, and families. They provide critical services that keep our community healthy. And with the recent spike in synthetic drugs, we are reminded that our job is not done uh, and our DBH must be ever vigilant in protecting and preventing people of the district from becoming involved in drug use. We need a strong leader who will fulfill the department's vision to create a quality mental health system that is focused on recovery, one that is available and accessible to people of all ages and cultures. I'm very pleased to announce, uh, after our search, we have selected Dr. Tanya Royster to lead the Department of Behavioral Health. Let's give her a big round of applause. Dr. Royster comes to Washington with a long-standing commitment to health equity, to cultural competent practices, and to healthy neighborhoods and communities. She joins us from the Franciscan St. James Health System in Chicago, where she currently serves as their Director of Behavioral Health. Prior to her current role, Dr. Royster served in Illinois state government. She also worked in academic medical settings and earned tenure at the University of Illinois at Chicago. 
As a sign of her bona fides, the Annie E. Casey Foundation selected Dr. Royster as one of its 2010 and 11 Child and Family Fellows. Dr. Royster is my kind of leader, someone who's getting things done, exercises fiscal responsibility, and is a passionate about serving the community. Um, and I had a chance to, to meet, uh, I guess, two of the reasons why she works so hard. Um, her daughters, who are equally excited to be coming to Washington. So let's hear it for Dr. Tanya Royce during her girls. I also want to thank all the men and women who have uh, been leading change at the Department of Behavioral Health. You know that this was a department that was recently joined together, two different departments, to focus on mental health issues and to focus on, uh, on, on substance abuse disorders. And the staff has really worked hard to make sure that that, that combination is beneficial to the residents at the District of Columbia. And Dr. Bar Dr. Bazron has been critical to that transformation, and she's been critical to leading the agency during this interim period. Interim period. So please join me in thanking Dr. Bazron for her leadership. So with that, I would like uh, to invite to the podium uh, my nominee, uh, my appointee, and the next director of the Department of Behavioral Health, Dr. Tanya Royster. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for your kind and generous introduction. I am truly honored and humbled by the opportunity to work with you as we serve the people of Washington, D.C. Please let me also add my sincere appreciation to Dr. Bazaran and all the DBH staff who have helped to work and ensure that the residents of the district have access to high quality mental health care thus far. Finally, I would like to thank the youth who are present today and those who have participated in shaping the mental health care system thus far. It is our responsibility to support you and your parents on your journey of becoming healthy, productive citizens. But we can't do it without your help. Mental health is a key component in your ability to learn, to work, to heal, and to grow in all areas of your life. I look forward to working with the residents, both adult and youth, our providers, and our sister agencies as we help you obtain your goals. The services that we provide will be comprehensive and offer treatment for all mental health and substance use disorders. They will be outcome and data driven and integrated with other areas of your health care. They'll be community based occurring in the most natural setting possible and increasingly focusing on education, public awareness, prevention and early intervention. And we're going to look to leverage as many funding streams as possible. I'm privileged to begin my service as your director of the Department of Behavioral Health and ready to get to work. Thank you. All right, that's And I am most pleased to turn now, um, and certainly in welcoming Dr. Royster and her family to Washington. Um, she starts on August 3rd, I'm told, so that's, uh, that's good news. Uh, but we also want to recognize and want you to know, uh, Dr. Royster, that we're, uh, our host site today, uh, is very critical in our services to young people across the district. Um, and I'm very pleased now, uh, to introduce, um, Lori Kaplan, who leads the LAYC. Well, welcome, everyone. Good morning and welcome. And it's so nice to welcome your girls to D.C. <laughs> so next summer, if you're looking for a place, you'll know where to come, okay? Just call me. I'll give you my email. Welcome. We are so proud to be the host agency of the D.C. Prevention Center for Wards 1 and 2. We're one of four prevention centers and will be actively involved in disseminating information and coordinating local activities for the campaign. My colleagues from the other prevention centers are here. Thank you for all the really wonderful work you do. The prevention center at the youth center is part of a larger community wellness department where we provide young people with the opportunities to build their leadership skills and be peer educators for healthy lifestyles. We know that you, all the young people here today, 
have the ability to be the best advocates for yourselves and your friends. And when you give them that information and when given the opportunity and knowledge, they will make the right choices for themselves. So thank you. Underage drinking is a big national public health issue, especially among teens and young adults. Underage drinking puts young people, puts you guys at risk for a variety of short and long-term physical and emotional issues. It affects you and your family and endangers the people in your life. In the words of the Surgeon General's call to action to prevent and reduce underage drinking, underage alcohol use is all of our problems, everybody's problem, and the solution is all of our responsibility. This campaign will reach parents and caregivers of children between the ages of 8 and 16 through print and social media and through all of you. It is of pivotal importance to involve the community in the campaign so that businesses, parents, schools, and residents fill ownership in every single effort to protect all the young people in the District of Columbia from exposure to alcohol. Now I'd like to say we're really, really lucky that we have the mayor with us here today, and we have a mayor that cares about the health and well-being and safety of all young people in D.C. And we have a little gift for you. Thank you. And it's just a small token, and it says, in recognition of your valuable contribution towards the health and the well-being of the youth in D.C. Oh, I love Presented it. today. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> but anyway, we're just so proud to be a part of this effort. And I think I got an email the other day that we were able, through our under-spying kind of thing, to get a business shut down who was selling you alcohol yeah. to all of you. So we're proud of our work. We're very proud to welcome you to D.C. And muchísimas gracias for your efforts you. and all that I know we will do together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. Well, that's those are all good points that you mentioned. And I noticed that we have one of our vehicles out here from the Department of Behavioral Health. And I invite everybody to take a look at it. And I will take a few questions from any press. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Why now when it comes to the alcohol initiative and what the statistics that have been released say about you know current trends relatively speaking has there been a spike are kids younger drinking these days well we have information that I cited from one of the surveys that really just points to a critical um, percent of children who have tried alcohol by the age of 13 um, and we know that so many of the um, formative decisions that young people are are, are making, um, they're starting to, to make at that age. Uh, so we want to make sure that parents are armed with as much information um, as they can on a variety of issues, but alcohol use um, is certainly one of them. Let me ask uh, Dr. Bajron uh, to add to that in terms of trends. Good afternoon. I think what we're seeing is that young people are using drugs earlier and I mean not drugs and alcohol earlier and in terms of our underage um, alcohol campaign um, we know that we have to get information out to educate parents, family members and communities about the deleterious effects of alcohol although alcohol uh, may in fact uh, be uh, legal for adults over the, uh, you know, for adults. It is not legal for young people. So we want to protect them and we want to get the messages out. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, everybody. Yep, yep.